about. I've been really lucky to be in the prep classroom this year at Kilbury Valley um, and seen, even though it's been quite a hectic year, just the learning. Not And, of course, oh, there's a, a big, big emphasis on academic learning, but it's the social and the emotional side, the resilience of our kids that have grown and developed so much over such a crazy year, the friendships that they've made. And we probably thought coming back from COVID they'd be a little bit nervous coming into the classroom, but we didn't see that at all. It was almost like Christmas Day again for those little kids, you know, walking in, seeing their, their friends that they've made throughout the, the year, um, all the opportunities that they've been given. We're really lucky to have very open classrooms. So our, our classes are able to do a lot of hands-on learning, um, a lot of integrated learning so they can move from one side of the room to the other. Um, of course, their confidence and independence, but I really need to include their resilience in that, um, has just grown and it's not like, you know, that we get these little kinder kids that come into the class at the beginning of the year and they're a little bit nervous and unsure to these kids that are now counting down to be ready for grade one. They're confident to go out into the yard and to make new friends. Um, and at the end of each day, I think if you come into our classroom, what you can see is big, happy, smiling faces, which you can see from a few of our kids in those photos there. And in our classroom, so as I was saying, they are very... We're lucky to have two classes that work together. They're really nice and open playing classrooms, which allow us to do things like flexible seating. So kids can, can work in small groups. They can work in big groups. They can work independently. We've got the opportunity to have sort of breakout areas. So if they need sort of time to, to reset or just to calm or to have a quiet space, we've got the, the space to be able to do that. Our classrooms, although nice and bright and colourful and you know, we've got pictures of the kids up on the wall, lots of their work so that they, they feel pride because their work's going up on the walls, just like when you put your kids' work up on the fridge. Um, but also we've got the structure of the day so the kids know what's coming next. It's all up there and it's visual for them. There's no surprises during the day. Um, everything is he's in a really positive environment so the kids know what's expected of them and what's happening around the classroom. Hi everybody, I'm Chris Turner and I am the prep level leader for this year and I'm going to be talking about the five golden rules. Now, the five golden rules that we have, it's a consistent approach across the whole school. So classroom management for everyone um, in, in the school, we're all following these um, five rules and these rules are displayed all over the school. So they're displayed in the, um, the principal's office, in the... Um, in all of the classrooms, out in the yard, um, so that the children are aware of the rules right from day one. Um, and we revise the rules every year and talk about what that looks like in each of the classrooms, what it looks like outside in the yard, and um, so that they're all aware of those um, rules. And being a consistent approach, there's, um, the same rules are in each of the classrooms. Um, so that's what we're um, following and um, and the kids are well aware of all those rules. There are, we focus on being positive, but there are also um, consequences um, with a bit of time out, like if they're given reminders and a little bit of time out just to um, think about um, maybe um, choices that have been made that weren't quite so good. And then they can come back within a couple of minutes and have a little bit of, chat, bit of a chat and then getting on and ready to learn again. Good evening, everyone. My name's Chris Taylor. I'm the assistant principal that looks after the teaching and learning across the whole school. But when we look at the prep curriculum, as all areas of the curriculum, it's based on the Victorian curriculum. There is a set curriculum that we follow for our students to um, do the learning and the teachers do the planning according to that curriculum. So there are um, different areas that we need to uh, bring to our students. So literacy, which is our reading, writing, speaking and listening. Numeracy, of course, which is our number and algebra. Measurement and geometry, statistics and probability. They are the main strands of number. There's science, which is exciting physical, earth and space science, the humanities. We cover areas like geography and history. We have digital technologies, which is uh, in the form of computers that are around the room. There's iPads. And we have a couple of areas in the school that's designated to digital technologies. The 
prep students also are engaged in health and physical education, which is really important for their learning. Um, arts, we have visual arts and performing arts. And our language other than English study is Spanish, and you'll hear a bit about these later tonight. And we also have a program called Respect, Rights, Resilience and Respectful Relationships, which is a really important part of the curriculum. It's about developing those uh, social skills, those emotional intelligences, those understandings of how we get along together and how we understand ourselves. So if we move into the next slide, literacy, we implement a phonics program called Little Learners Love Literacy, which is really the really beginning part of learning to read. So it's all about decodable text. So when we say decodable, you are able to sound out the letters in the words to make the words. And that's the very beginning of the students beginning to read. So this helps them to develop confidence and skills in learning to read and write and speak and listen. So with that, in those um, literacy sessions, there is explicit teaching of the alphabet and those sounds that those letters make. The teachers share and they model and they guide the students with the reading and there's independent reading and writing as well. Fine motor development is really important um, as they learn to hold pencils, how they learn to um, use those fine motor skills in being able to um, do their work. Oral language is also a really important part of literacy and vocab, developing their uh, knowledge of words and how to use words correctly. There's lots of partner games and songs that they can get involved in. And, of course, using technology is a big part of the learning in schools today. So with our literacy sessions, we aim to target the different learning needs. We understand that just because a child is at a certain chronological age doesn't mean that their learning is all the same. So we really look at differing, different different. Uh, learning needs and styles of our students so that we use that word our learning is differentiated so that we can meet those needs meet the needs of the students where they're at so that they're all able to experience success and not be frustrated with their learning. I'm Mrs Johnson and I'm one of our EAL teachers for those who don't know what EAL stands for it is English as an additional language and Ms Taylor pointed out that we have a wide variety of learning needs and the ultimate goal of any literacy program is right down the bottom on the screen for all of our students to understand how standard Australian English works and to be able to develop the fundamental functional English language and literacy skills and that's why we use the Little Learners program for all the students. But to meet those needs, the differing needs and from the variety of backgrounds our families come from, there are two pathways that our students could potentially use and that goes back to the Victorian curriculum. The first pathway is the English curriculum and the second is the um, EAL curriculum. The English curriculum is most suited for students where English is the only language that they are using at home or anywhere in their life. Um, it can also be for students who are learning more than one language at the same time, so our students who are English as additional language, when their English language skills, their proficiency in being able to read and write and speak and listen with the academic language that is required in school is at a similar level to their peers and they are achieving at the age appropriate English standards that the students who are accessing the English curriculum do. Um, that's why we have the other curriculum as available because the English curriculum was made with only students who have only ever heard one language in their lifetime, whereas we know that not everybody fits in this. So the EAL curriculum is most suited for our students where learning English is an additional language to the language that they've already been learning since birth. Um, and 
It is also about when the English curriculum would not be the most appropriate way for us to plan and assess the students in their learning because it wouldn't be a true and accurate reflection of the wonderful progress they've made um, during the year. So the EAL curriculum acknowledges the value of learning more than one language at the same time and what implications that can have. Um, it does this by providing opportunities for our students to draw on their knowledge of their languages that they are speaking at home um, and in order to enhance the, their developing understanding of how the English language system works. Um, it helps to strengthen the student's understanding of how language works and over time helps to improve their ability to use both their languages or in some cases more than two languages at home. It also helps to develop a really strong sense of self and identity because family culture is such an important part of the student's everyday life. Um, your beautiful children have been learning since they were born and everything that's been going on in the home has provided them with some valuable learning experiences that they will bring with them to Kilbury Valley Primary School um, and throughout their schooling years. So the EAL curriculum acknowledges that and gives them the time that they need in order to help marry the two languages that they're working with. So a student who does have more than one language at home might work through the EAL curriculum in order to achieve that goal of understanding and utilising standard Australian um, English. However, there is an arrow pointing to the English curriculum and that's because as the child progresses, they might end up getting to a point where the English curriculum now would be the best way to work out where the child is learning, what they need to learn next and how they've been progressing. So I put the student at the very, very top because the way we work out which curriculum is best for your child is all about the student. We need to know about your child, about their background, about their learning prior experiences prior to school because there are many factors that play into how we learn and attain our literacy. So later on, someone else will be speaking about enrolments. So this is the point where I'm going to urge you please help us to work out which pathway is best for your child so that we can provide them with the opportunities to help them flourish and not have lots and lots of frustration along the way. Um, the best way you can do that is in the enrolment um, form. There are places where it allows you to let us know what languages are spoken at home. And some families um, say, oh, I speak this language, but my child only speaks English. It's really important for us to know that there is another language at home, even if you feel that your child is more predominant in English, because they've been listening to those other languages. So they are still trying to learn the differences between the two languages and how both of them work. Um, if um, English... Um, your English skills are limited and you would like to be able to communicate with us, we do have translator services that we can access and we do so regularly and we do them during our um, parent-teacher interviews as well. We just need to know that um, you need this service, so please put it on the enrolment form as well. Thank you very much. Um, in numeracy, we support our students to become confident, effective problem solvers who are able to communicate their mathematical thinking. So in numeracy, we encourage the students to explore, it, represent and interpret using a broad range of mathematical strategies. It's really important that we understand and share the thinking. They learn to solve problems and apply reasoning to explain and justify their thinking. So it's very much hands-on. We use, we call it manipulatives, so that the students can show what they're thinking as they are solving the problems in maths. They aren't expected to work on their own. Maths is best learnt by sharing with a partner and doing some group work and everyone understanding and being able to share what they're thinking. So as I mentioned before, our curriculum is very differentiated. So we meet the students' needs 
at their point of need so that we can have success for all students and that they are all catered for. So, yeah, maths is fantastic. Hi, I'm Cathy Smith and I'm a Year 2 teacher and a learning specialist. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the science. So at Kilbury Valley Primary School, we use the Primary Connections program and students learn through an inquiry-based learning model. So we have the physical and earth and space science for the preps, so those two branches of science, and they are over their, two, their sessions are over two terms. Okay, the science is um, taught using the 5E science model, and this encourages students to explore and test their own and other ideas and use evidence to support their claims. So students are really um, engaged with hands-on activities and where they can explore and develop their scientific explanations and then they can really develop a new understanding and skills. So they also make lots of predictions and become very um, good at asking questions and being inquisitive about the world around them. So science is fantastic at our school and um, the classroom teachers teach the science and the children always are so excited and engaged during these science sessions. I'm going to talk a little bit about investigation time. Uh, we do investigation time a few times over the week and this is one of, I, I want to say, one of their most favourite times in the week because it's where they get to show car case one, um, where they really excel in their learning and two, their curiosity, so they're wondering in learning. They get a real hands-on approach. Um, we cover different different opportunities so they get to do the numeracy and the literacy but it's sort of integrated into different hands-on learning um, and inquiry uh, possibilities so we have different sections in the classroom um, you know construction they get to do some writing they're reading mathematics technology but this is also a really great opportunity for those kids to work in teams to talk to each other so to really uh, improve their verbal communication, their ability to think and talk about their reasoning of why they're thinking different ways. I've got one little gentleman in my class who is a really, he's a tinkerer, um, and this is where he gets to be able to teach other students and, and, and how to do things, and this is where he really gets to shine. It's also a really great opportunity for them to develop their speaking and their and their listening skills so at the end of these they get to showcase and to share what they've done in these sessions and it gives them an opportunity to sort of be a leader in um in their learning hi everyone my name is victoria horsborough and i'm the performing arts teacher at kilbury valley primary school um, we have a fantastic specialist program that we are very lucky to have with very experienced teachers uh, we've got we offer four 50-minute specialist sessions per week so some of those specialist sessions could include visual arts or performing arts or PE, physical education. Um, we teach Spanish as our LOAT. We also have library and our boost team who can work with selected students um, to extend or support their learning as well. Now, as part of the performing arts team, um, we cover music, dance and drama throughout the year, um, definitely in prep all the way up to grade six. And Mr. Fleming, if you could go on to the next slide for me, pretty please. You can see some gorgeous photos of our past preppies um, when they have had a chance to be uh, in our school musical, our annual school musical, which is always a highlight of every year. The students learn a dance in their performing arts classes and then they also practice it within their class. All of the students perform, so if you have siblings at the school already, they perform on the same night. So when we do go to the theatre, um, the only cost involved is the ticket that you purchase to see the kids. And I can guarantee you that our school musicals are like nothing you have seen before. I've had a number of parents and especially a number of fathers who have been very hesitant to attend. Um, they're not excited about a night of what they think will be a little bit boring. Our musicals are anything other than that. They are highly entertaining. And yes, I will blow my own horn there. Um, I'm not the person that writes them, so I'm allowed to do that. Um, 
the kids and their dancers, as you can see, they get fabulous costumes designed and created by our visual arts team. And we've also had some other opportunities, including our choirs. A highlight of most years is our Christmas choir, uh, which we do with the older kids. And they also travel to the retirement home um, that's local to us, as well as the Casey Central Shopping Centre to spread a bit of Christmas joy. And we try and do our Kilbury's Got Talent every year. Um, so a lot of the kids get a chance to audition to showcase their talents from singing to dancing to we've had magic, we've had circus skills. We've got a very talented bunch of kids at Kilbury Valley and we try and give the opportunity for all the kids from prep to year six to be involved in all of those. So in prep, the, the, the focus is on um, fundamental motor skills. So there are three to four weeks at a time on a particular skill. There is one PE session per week. And so um, some of the things like running, jumping, hopping, skipping, dodging, throwing the ball, bouncing, kicking, throwing and catching. So the, um, the sport teachers um, for the preps asked me to pass on over the holidays. Um, just see if you can um, get your child to be focusing on some of those um, skills um, it was funny, like what? I'm oh, not actually funny, but it, during um, remote learning, we had um, physical activity tasks every day, and a lot of the um, preppies would be um, their families would be videoing doing some of these skills. And hopping is something that is um, really hard for them to do. They might do one or two hops and then nearly fall fall over. So it's like watching funniest home videos. <laughs> so over the holidays, if you get a chance to throw the ball or um, let them catch or kicking and um, dodging and and running around and jumping and moving, that would be really great and the PE teachers would love that to be um, started if not already. I know some of those, those kids are very, very active. Um, we also offer other sporting opportunities across the, the year levels um, and one of the also the preps are also involved is the fun run which is um, held every year at the beginning of the year. So um, they don't leave the school grounds. They run around the Oval and it's a really fun day. They've um, In the past they've had inflatables and um, water pistols and um, they get to dress up in their house colours. The houses are um, their colours but they've also got names. So yellow is Kettner, Merrigan is red, Van Wyss is blue and... Um, green is Lindsay and they are based and those names are based on um, sports um, people within um, our area um, so the kids get to in, get to uh, participate in that and they have so much fun and as the um, children move through their older year levels they get to participate in inter-school sports and athletics days and the Kia Cup which is based on netball, kangaroo eights which is um, cricket, so many different opportunities and um, yeah, lots of um, teamwork and and if they're um, in our own um, sporting day, sometimes they might move on to the higher levels into the, um, you know, against other schools and then district and who knows, maybe even state level. So it's they get a lot of opportunities at our school. Muchas gracias. Buenas tardes a todos. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Señorita Cifuentes, I'm the Spanish teacher. Um, we have actually been teaching Spanish at Kilbury Valley Primary School for the last three years. And um, this year we've actually have started teaching the preps and they come in with pro knowledge. They all know Dora the Explorer and they all say, I can speak Spanish and they count to me, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. And they can all say, hola, they can all say hello. So they all come in really enthusiastic and excited to come and learn a new language. And um, we actually, ex I expose them all to um, both. I speak to them in English and in Spanish as well. We play lots of games. We sing lots of songs. We read stories. They work in groups. And they're really excited to go home. And they're always asking me to say, how do I say this to my mum? Or how do I say this to my dad? So when they see me in the yard, they all say, hola, como estas? Hello, how are you? So they're all very excited to know another language. So. They leave the classroom with big, smiley, happy faces. And um, yeah, it's just, it's great to see them, how they actually um, are acquiring a new language. And they're like sponges. They're actually absorbing everything that is being taught. And the classroom is a welcoming and happy place. 
so they can actually come in and they know that they're going to be immersed um, in lots of vocabulary, basic vocabulary that they can actually use when they go home. So that's what the Spanish um, program is actually all about. So I look forward to meeting your um, children. So from me, it's buenas tardes amigos, una good evening friends, and I hope you have a lovely evening. Gracias. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Mrs Bailey and I teach art. Um, the art program for preps is um, mostly based on fine motor skills. So things like being able to cut with scissors, use a glue stick, hold pencils, um, different sorts, uh, experimenting with paints and different types of paints, being able to uh, fold paper and make collage, all those really basic sort of skills that they're going to need for um, developing their, their art skills throughout the rest of primary school. Um, so they get to experience lots of different activities where a lot of the time they don't even really, really know that they're trying to learn how to cut and trying to learn how to, to paste things and use different types of glue. Um, it's always really bright, colourful, uh, engaging type of act, types of activities. We um, often include um, a lot of story, picture story books within our art program. So we read stories and then we do activities based on um, characters and things that have happened in, in the book. So incorporating the lang um, English language and reading and those sorts of things within the art program as well. And they get to take home uh, lots of different bits of artwork. Um, not every week, sometimes the activities will, will take a couple of weeks to finish, um, but they will bring home different types of paintings and drawings and collages and, and those sort of things during the year. Um, and as they go through primary school, obviously they develop better skills and they find um, different types of art that they particularly like. Some of them like construction more, some of them like painting, or oh, actually everybody loves painting. It's the most fun and messy thing they want to do. Um, but yeah, they'll, they'll find different things that, that, that they will um, prefer, I, I guess. And, and hopefully they'll be able to do some of those, those sort of activities at home as well. Good holiday filler in activities. So in terms of getting your children ready for coming into the art room, um, anything that you can do at home that helps them with holding a pencil, holding a texter, uh, crayons, those sorts of things to try and strengthen their, their fingers and that grip type of thing is really good. Making Play-Doh and um, making shapes out of Play-Doh, rolling it, scrunching it. Those things work really well with uh, developing their finger strength. Um, and even cutting, a lot of parents will say, oh, I don't let my children cut with scissors at home. And when they get to school, they have no idea how to hold a pair of scissors. <laughs> Some of them hold them completely backwards. So you can buy uh, really good kit kids scissors, um, Crayola scissors are really good. Kmart has a lot of scissors for um, little kids that are really cheap, but it just helps them to learn how to, to hold them and to cut and develop those um, fine motor skills and, and strength within their fingers. So if you can encourage your children to do those sorts of activities, cut up an old newspaper, um, the junk mail, cutting out pictures out of the junk mail, that would be really, really helpful. And also make sure that they have an art smock at the start of the year. Um, whether you buy an actual art smock or quite often um, an old shirt with the sleeves cut off a little bit so that they're not quite so, so long and dangling in the paint, that's really good. Or even an old wind cheater, like a jumper, because it's a little bit thicker, the paint doesn't soak in. So an old jumper is, is sometimes or sometimes good, as long as it's big enough to cover their uniform. So um, I think that's probably about it for, for me for visual arts.
Um, and yeah, I hope to see them creating lots of bright, colourful things. Sometimes I wonder why we're so exhausted, but it sounds like it is just non-stop, isn't it, in prep at every year level, but how we fit all this in sometimes it is crazy. <laughs> um, so we also have lots of special event days throughout the year. Um, in prep, we celebrate our teddy bears picnic. Um, this is a time where um, the families can come into the classroom and we work together, uh, read some stories together, do some craft activities, um, decorate some biscuits this year. We also met Ben the Bear, who was uh, from our Little Learners program. He came into the classroom and the kids were very excited about that. Um, we count up to our hundredth day of learning, our hundredth day of school. Um, on that day, we celebrate um, or look at um, what 100 is. We count up to 100. Um, the children bring in 100 things. Um, we have a crazy hair day, our healthy living day, um, which I think is actually in a week or two. Um, uh, looks at how we can um, nourish our bodies with healthy food, move our bodies um, to help us learn and grow. Our book week is also celebrated where we can dress up as our favourite book characters. Um, and one of my favourite days is Harmony Day where we, um, as a whole school, we celebrate this day together where we celebrate multiculturalism um, and recognise the diversity um, across our whole school. And as uh, Mr Fleming and a few people have mentioned, we are very inclusive and it's a really great day to celebrate all of the different cultures um, and traditions that we have through our school. I know I've certainly learnt a lot from my students and their families. I believe I've been to the planetarium before. I don't know if that was in prep, but perhaps another year level. Um, I mentioned the dinosaurs going to exhibitions, um, heading up to the city sometimes. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to get out too much the last couple of years, but fingers and toes crossed that is all over now. <laughs> um, but yes, it's a great way to get the students involved and out of the classroom um, and really getting that hands-on experience. At Kilbury Valley, we have some wonderful facilities outside. Um, the prep playground is designed um, and designated just for the prep students, particularly in those first few weeks. It can be quite daunting for them uh, to head outside and there's 500 other children running around. So this is a nice, safe place for the prep children to go. You'll be able to see um, with that blue shade sail over there. Um, there's lots of climbing, there's slides, there's um, ladders, so they work on their fine motor skills even while they're playing, um, building those muscles in their fingers while they're climbing, um, their balance. We've got a wonderful uh, resource and uh, renovated library, lots of wonderful books in there, uh, lots of picture books. Their children are able to borrow um, books each week from the library, so it's a great opportunity for them to go and pick a book that they love. Um, and bring it home and share it with the whole family. Um, a few other great spaces around the school. We have uh, the gym, which was mentioned earlier, um, used for the PE um, programs, performances and assemblies, which are every fortnight. Um, we have a computer lab uh, where uh, the classes go uh, once a week and can um, learn how to use the computers. They'll start um, learning how to log on, how to use the mouse, um, start um, looking at the keyboard uh, when we start uh, looking at letters and things like that. Uh, we also have a canteen which is open and allows the students to purchase food um, during recess and lunch and then lunch orders can be ordered online and they're delivered to the classroom. So, right, so these are some of the things that your children will need to know. They need they will need to know um, how to um, go to the toilet um, independently. At the beginning of the year, when um, we have toilet breaks, we actually take the whole class and walk together to the toilets and uh, but then allow them to go into the toilet. We wait outside and um, make sure they get there to the toilet and back um, safely. Um, also knowing about, um, you know, how to wash their hands um, after they've been to the toilet, flushing the toilets, um, blowing their nose rather than just putting their face up towards us. So if you um, can practice that over the holidays, that would be much appreciated. 
Um, and also, if you've got um, boys um, and you're out and about and using um, public um, toilets to have them practice using the urinal as well so that they um, know how to use that when they're in the boys' toilets here at school. And also being able to ask if they um, need to go to the toilet, so even to practice at home, asking can they go to the toilet or um, saying if they're not feeling well. So if you can just let them know it's okay to say that you need to go to the toilet or it's okay to say that you're not feeling well so that we can help them. Understanding and just following simple instructions. Um, um, we'll take it really slow at the beginning and just give, um, you know, one or two steps for an instruction, not giving them like 10 at a time. Um, so stand up or sit down or line up or follow me, eyes on me, all those sort of things just to help them um, start to learn the expectations of the classroom um, and um, learning and to help them with their learning. Um, learning to open and close their own lunchbox and be able to eat the food. Um, bananas have been, you know, not being able to get the top of the banana and break it off to peel it. Um, they often give hand that to us. Um, some mums um, cut up the fruit and put them into little containers. Um, so that helps them just to be able to um, eat their fruit a lot easier. Now, remember, they're only coming to school for one day. So you don't need to pack enough food for three weeks because they won't get time to eat all of that. Um, we do have a fruit break, and that's later on. I'll talk about that. We do have a fruit break, so we do eat fruit every day. And for lots of children who have it cut up, that's really helpful. Um, get them to practice unzipping a school bag and being able to recognise um, their own name or be, being able to write their own name. If they can't write their own name before they come to school, don't panic. We will be focusing on that. But if they can recognise their own name, that's a start. Um, and also um, throughout the year, they um, need to have their um, all their belongings, all their um, jumpers and hats and bags labelled because we've held up many a jumper or a jacket um, with, or a hat with no name. It's brand new. We know it's one of theirs, but they have no idea whose it is and neither do we. So um, they're so expensive. So make sure you label them and just keep an eye as they're going through the wash that they're not actually washing off the names on their clothing. So each day, we, like I was saying before, we have a fruit break and that can also be vegetables, um, carrots or um, what else is there? Like some people bring in the little zucchinis or apples, all those different sorts of things, trying to focus on um, a healthy um, lunch, not loading up with heaps of sugar because otherwise we're going to wear the consequence of that. Um, a water bottle is really important throughout the whole year, not just when it's hot. Even though we've got the drinking taps outside, they have access to their own water bottle in the classroom, a snack for recess time. At this point in time, our fruit snack is at around about 10 o'clock each morning. So we'll start off with some learning and then have a little um, sort of like a brain break and have, a, um, have our fruit and have a drink, go to the toilet, all those sort of things, get back on with the learning. Then we have lunchtime at 11.30. Um, um, the eating time's only about 10 minutes, but when we're starting at the beginning of the year, we like to give them extra time because we know that they're um, eating a lot more slowly. Um, and also recess is at 2 o'clock, so they're 40-minute breaks. Um, recess is for 40 minutes and the lunchtime going outside is for 40 minutes. Um, the school bag, so just make sure that it is um, an appropriate size for your child. Um, lots of students have the Kilbury Valley Primary School bag um, and we are a Sun Smart school, which means um, all, all um, staff and students are expected to wear a wide brimmed hat in term one and four. And also um, sunscreen. The teachers won't be putting sunscreen on your child. We're not able to do that. So if you want your child to wear sunscreen, um, put that on them before school or if it's a little roll on and they know how to put that on themselves um, throughout the different breaks they can do that but that's up to you uh, and them. Um, Mrs Bailey also mentioned about the art smock so we've talked about that. 
when we give you the transition bag to your child on tra transition day, which we'll talk about in a moment, there, um, that comes with a bag that the children can use for a library bag. We visit the library every week where they can borrow two books each um, week. So um, this bag that we provide can be used or you might already have a library bag. Um, spare changes of clothes for muddy days, wet days if they fall over or even um, change of underwear and um, you know, sometimes they might have a few toileting issues or accidents. Um, so a good change of clothes um, is um, really helpful. Even if you think, oh, no, 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 they won't need it. Because sometimes it's so exciting outside because they're really involved in, you know, making friends and playing, they forget about the toilet. And then when they need to go, oh, you've got a, like a window of 10 seconds. So um, sometimes that's a bit of an issue. <laughs> And, yeah, like I said before, clearly labelled so we know whose um, clothing it belongs to. Because, like, say if they go to a, the gym, they might take their jumper off uh, when they're running around or if they go into the art room and take off their hat, um, you know, after they've been out at lunchtime, that can, we need names on that. makes it easier to hand out. Uniform. So uniform is compulsory. Um, we have got a school uniform pol um, policy and so this is just two examples of um, the summer uniform, and which is the dress, but there's also other um, options for girls in the, um, in the uniform range. If we hadn't have been having a remote, I mean, if we hadn't have been remotely um, doing this, we would have had a, a range that you can actually have a look at. Um, there's um, a skirt which is sort of like a skirt, but it's also shorts. Um, when the girls are, uh, um, just a tip, when the girls are on the um, playground equipment, um, sometimes they might wear bike shorts that go underneath their dresses so that, you know, that um, keeps them covered up. So if the, your child is someone who loves the playground, that might be an option, having little, like little short um, bike shorts or something under their dresses so um, if they're liking to wear the dresses. There's tracksuit pants um, for boys and girls, it, um, if that's something that they like to wear. There's shorts um, and the polo shirt and the jackets there. And the, like I said before, the wide-brimmed hat, which needs to be worn in Term 1 and Term 4. You can order the, um, the, uh, the uniform online. It can be click and collect. I had a look at it, um, the, the information online myself. And the hours are there, but in the information pack that we will send you um, next week, that's also included in there about um, the uniform, what you can um, purchase and how much and the ordering and all the information about the uniform is there. Um, attendance, it's really important that your child comes to school if they are well. Um, just thinking, oh, they've woken up and they're a little bit tired and they say, oh, I don't want to go. Make sure you do actually send them if they're well because um, missing out on school um, really breaks the, the learning routine um, and they may not be engaged as much if there's um, a lot of um, um, absences um, because the, the learning, it, we build on it from um, each day. Uh, we might have a unit of work, say, in maths, we start, you know, at the beginning of the week or and then we work, we build on that from day to day. So it's really important that we focus on getting the um, students at school um, each day, and especially it helps them with their friendships and um, so it's really, really important. Um, also arriving at school on time. Um, the, the doors open at this point in time at um, 10 to 9 each morning. So the children, once they come in and get themselves settled, if they've got a little bit of time before the bell rings at um, nine o'clock, that helps them just to um, feel relaxed. It's not rushed. And then the learning starts at, um, you know, around that time, nine o'clock. So we really focus on um, valuing attendance and, um, and not just having a day off because it's their birthday or not just having a day off because they're tired. We really encourage that they come each day um, if they are well. <laughs>
Good evening, everyone. My name is Jen Matheson. I'm one of the prep teachers at Kilbury Valley Primary School, and I'm going to speak to you this evening about medical information. So um, we would really appreciate it if you could inform the classroom teacher if your child has had any medication before coming to school. Some medications do have side effects. It might make them feel a little bit sleepy. Um, or it might be a new medication. So it's great for us to know if they are on some medication, um, either ongoing or incidental, so that we can keep an eye on them and make sure they're okay while they're at school. Um, medication to be taken at school must be provided to the office and you will be given some forms to fill in, which will include information about dosage and it will also require a signature so that we have some, um, some proof that you've given consent for them to have that medication. And um, we need you to do this for both ongoing and for incidental medication. Um, and it's also very important that if they're on medication that's an ongoing thing and the dosages change, that you let us know. Um, I, I think it's probably important for that information to be given in writing as well so that the office has a record. But please check with the office staff and they'll be able to help advise you about that. Okay. Medical information also includes action plans and paperwork for the following medical conditions. And these are required from the first day of school because we just never know when there might be an incident that requires prompt action from the staff. So anaphylaxis or acute allergies. In our, um, our first aid room, we have posters on the wall, which will help to inform the staff of, with visuals of your child if they um, do suffer from anaphylaxis or acute allergies so that we can give them the right first aid promptly. Um, we need information about asthma, so an asthma management plan that's been prepared by you and your GP or your doctor um, is very important. Many children, particularly around this time of year, suffer from hay fever. So please make sure that you identify this on their enrolment form. And again, let us know if they've needed to have some hay fever medication in the morning. Um, we do use a platform called Seesaw, which we will set up at the start of the school year. That's a great way to communicate that information to classroom teachers, but please also let the office staff know. Um, from time to time, your child might be sick. So here are some important things to remember to help you um, gauge whether they're well enough to come to school. If they display any of the following symptoms, they need to stay at home. And you probably should get them checked by your doctor as well. So a fever of 37.3 degrees or above. If they have cold or flu symptoms, particularly with the situation with COVID at the moment, it's very important that they would stay at home. Any rashes of an unknown origin. So sometimes children have um, a rash and you know that that's an allergy maybe to a particular kind of food and you've applied some cream and you know they're okay to go to school but if we're not sure of the origin lots of rashes mean that there's a virus that's contagious so it's important that you get them checked out and keep them home. Vomiting and diarrhea. If your child has either of these they need to be kept at home until the symptoms have been absent for 48 hours so two days at home after they're well, because again, these are um, these are situations, medical situations that can be come contagious and can spread through a classroom and impact lots of other families. If your child is sick at school, or if they're injured at school, they will be taken to sick bay, which is just adjacent to the main office, and they'll receive treatment there from um, our first aid trained staff. And you will receive an information slip about the first aid applied if it's a minor incident and we can manage it at school. If it's more significant, then we will call you and we will ask you to come and collect your child if they're too sick to go back to the classroom. It's very important that you keep the school updated with your contact details 
and also emergency contact details so that we can call someone to come and collect your child if they're injured or if they're too sick to stay at school. So please keep checking and updating that. Make sure that the people who are the emergency contacts are known to your child, that there is a current phone number there. And if any of that information changes, let the school know as soon as possible. Head lice can be a problem with children um, at school. It is a very common problem for school aged children to get head lice and this has nothing to do with whether their hair is clean or dirty. Um, it often spreads from child to child when they're in close contact. Kids love their friends so sometimes they sit close by, they might be talking about something together in the classroom um, and it can spread very easily. So uh, important to remember that head lice don't cause any harm to your child's health, but they are really um, irritating and they can spread from person to person. So to prevent your child from getting head lice, um, please check your child's hair regularly and keep long hair tied back, plaited or braided. And it's very important if your child has head lice and you've treated it, please let the classroom teacher know in confidence so that we can inform other families in the class that they should check their children's hair too. No names are mentioned, but it is really helpful if we can stay on top of that and, um, and keep other families vigilant and let them know what to look out for as well. Thank you. So next week is um, the start of our prep transition program. So today the um, we prep teachers, um, the four of us um, met together and um, we have already started thinking about tasks that we're going to be um, giving the children um, in the transition sessions starting next week. Um, the time on there is, um, it's just a half an hour session. There are three of them, so starting at quarter to three until quarter past. They're only short sessions just to get your child used to coming to school and then um, coming back the following week because um, sometimes we hear, oh, I've been to school, I've done that, <laughs> I don't want to come back. So um, there's three sessions where they will get to start um, mixing with the other children because there's not just um, a couple of kinders or childcare centres that the children are coming from. They're coming from lots of different places within, you know, around us. Um, so um, we will be meeting at... Um, 2.30 and there'll be a, a top car park but there'll be more information about that. So there'll be three sessions starting next Wednesday afternoon. Um, you'll get um, a, an email will be sent off to you. Um, the child that the, the group that your child gets put into it, that's not going to be their class. The teacher that they are working with on those um, three sessions, may not necessarily be their prep teacher either. That has not been um, organised yet. Mr Fleming um, has got a lot of planning to do. But um, so just remember, um, they are not going to be in their class next week. They're going to be in a transition group so um, that we can get to see how the children are interacting with each other and, um, and what they're able to do at this very, very early stage. Um, so orientation day, the statewide um, transition day is on Tuesday the 7th of December. So this is where your um, child will meet their um, classroom teacher for next year. They will meet um, the children um, that are going to be in their class. They will also be given um, a bag with lots of different um, items that they might use over the holidays, you know, um, things like numbers where they can practice counting or tracing numbers, writing their name, um, doing, you know, little things like that. So that will be the statewide um, transition day, but there will be more information on that. There's a, um, a letter coming home about that as well. Um, the first day of prep. So it is um, Thursday the 3rd of February. The first day of school um, for um, government schools is Friday the 28th of January. 
that's going to be a curriculum day on that day for Kilbury Valley and also on Monday the 31st of January and then where all students won't come to school on that day. On the Tuesday the 1st, there will be, um, you will be notified um, to say what date your child will participate in an assessment session. So we'll be um, doing it, some tasks both based on literacy and numeracy. You will bring them to that session. It usually takes about 45 minutes. You bring them to the classroom and we give you the details about that later and then um, we assess them which will help us with um, forward planning for their um, for all the children's learning. Um, so on those days, the 1st, the 2nd, the 9th and the 16th, your child won't come to school unless you have received a notice to say that your child is meeting with their teacher to be assessed. Um, enrolment forms, if you haven't already, you're looking at this presentation and you're thinking whether you're coming to Kilbury Valley. Um, enrolment forms are at the office. Um, and when you are actually filling out the enrolment form, um, make sure you um, put in as much information as you can that will help with um, your, your um, child and help with their learning and us recognising um, where their needs are including like what um, Ms Johnson was saying earlier about being um, an EAL, um, having a speaking another language at school, please put that down on the information on the information enrolment forms. Um, if you need there next week there is going to be lots of information um, sent to you. Um, if you require a translator to help you in filling out any of the forms or reading any information, we can actually organise a, um, a translator or an interpreter. So if that's something that you need to um, get assistance with um, in helping to read um, the information and fill out those forms, let us know so that we can actually help you with that. So that'll be coming out next week. Even tomorrow, you may get an email about um, which um, transition group your child is going to be in. Um, so that they're ready for next week. At Kilby Valley Primary School, we have our school website and we also have our school Facebook page. Uh, parents can join our school Facebook page by liking it um, and you'll be able to receive updates regarding our school and events that are happening at our school and any information or news that we have. Uh, to learn more about our school, you can go to our website and have a look at the various areas uh, on our different pages, which has lots of information around our school. Our school also has a YouTube channel. Uh, we have two of them. One is called Kilbury Live. The other one is called Kilbury Connect. Um, please have a look on them because there are some great things about our school that you can learn there as well. One of them is the Kilbury Live, which are videos which are created by our Year 6 students. Um, the little presentation show is kind of like a news um, show that the children have recorded and the Kilbury Connect is a channel that we created especially for our remote learning which has got lots of information for our students, programs um, and activities for them to do online. Uh, one of the new features that we have just created for our school is a QR code um, tour of the school. So if you and your family are around the area, probably after school or on the weekend, you can come into the school grounds and you'll be able to see the QR codes on our doors. Uh, there is some located on our front door at the admin. There's also some located on the classroom doors. If you hold your phone over them and scan the QR code, it will show you a short video um, about that particular room or that particular topic. Um, it's a really fun way, engaging way for the students to learn about our school. Um, kind of like a little treasure hunt, really, running around the school and finding different rooms and different activities and programs for you to be involved in. Um, that brings us to the end of our presentation tonight. We have gone over time, so we don't really have much time left for questions. If you have something pressing that you would like to ask, um, I will just give a couple of minutes now to... Um, see if anyone wanted to unmute themselves, so we will do our best to try and answer it. 
Otherwise, feel free to email your question through and we'll do our best to answer it at another time. On the first day of school on the 3rd of February for preps, they're going to commence school that day at 9.30 and they will meet all of the prep teachers in the hall. That's right. Then as a class, they'll go back to their classrooms and then the prep teachers will bring the children back to the hall to meet their parents at 12.30. So it's only a half day on the first day of school. After that, every day the children should come directly to their classroom and enter their classroom through the external or the outside class door. And at the end of each school day, they need to be met there by a parent or an older sibling. They won't be allowed to walk home on their own or leave the school grounds unless they are with a grown up that is known to them. So that, that's a very important point. Okay, starting at 9.30 on the 3rd of February, being picked up at 12.30 and every other day after that, they go directly to their external classroom door to meet their teacher there from 8.50 in the morning. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mrs. Matheson. Now I have had uh, two questions come through. The first one is around assessment. Uh, our teachers use uh, lots of different assessments with our students and we have summative assessment and formative assessment. So our summative assessment is usually conducted three times a year. Uh, at the beginning of the year, in the middle of the year, and then again at the end of the year. And our formative assessment is conducted all the time. So our teachers will be uh, taking regular assessments with their students throughout each day, each week, each month with their students. Um, and the formative assessment is quite informal. Um, and it's usually things, you know, they might be listening to the students read um, and taking some notes along the side. They might be um, working with the students in some maths and again, taking some notes along that. Um, they might be making some comments uh, on the students' work or making even taking photos of their work and keeping that um, as evidence of their assessment as well. So assessment can be done in lots of different ways. Um, and our teachers use that all the time to inform them on where their students are at. Uh, the other question I had was around students with special needs. Uh, we have got quite a few students in our school with special needs and we have lots on offer for them. We do have a leading teacher of inclusion who would be your first point of call um, to speak to around your students' individual needs and be able to discuss the individual supports that we can offer for your child. Thank you everybody for coming to our presentation. I hope you enjoyed it and we look forward to seeing your children at our school next week. Please take care and good night everybody.